the balance that I see sometimes, and I've shared this often, is that if you push people too hard, they actually will crumble. But if you if you show too much support without that push, people don't think it's actually what you're doing is that important. So you got to kind of find that balance that I've seen a lot of educators over the years leave teaching because they felt they weren't growing under their current leadership. And when we actually try to, and this is, this is a problem that a lot of teachers talk about, and I think it's really powerful, is they feel so micromanaged. And I actually would say if I kind of fell in the balance is that I didn't maybe, um, I don't know if I'd say didn't support as much as I should have when I was a principal. I think part of it too is, you know, you always kind of look back on your career because I actually, I, I didn't want to micromanage my, my people. And part of it was because I didn't want to be micromanaged as an educator, as a teacher. So I always wanted to think about what's the principle I wanted when I was a teacher and how am I being that person? But the weird thing is micromanaging takes a lot of time that if you're trying to control everything, you tend to not be able to do other things. You not really grow. And so kind of putting people in a position where they know they have autonomy, but you're also there to help them grow to become better. And that, that Lasorda quote, and I'll share it again. I believe that managing is like holding a dove in your hand. If you hold it too tightly, you kill it. But if you hold it too loosely, you lose it. I think that's a really powerful quote and just a great summary of leadership. And this beautifully lands in to the something professional part of this podcast. And I, I've kind of mentioned it uh, here and there, but really haven't made a, a formal announcement. But right now, uh, myself and Allison Apsey, and if you don't know Allison Apsey, I really think you should follow her. She's absolutely amazing, brilliant leader, brilliant educator, and an absolutely amazing writer. I've known her for years. Uh, her and I met at a Michigan Elementary School principal conference that I was so blessed to be able to uh, keynote several years ago. And her and I just had great conversations. We've stayed connected ever since. And she'll tell you that she started blogging after that conference, after seeing me. And so it's really, really cool because her and I are actually writing a book together. And I'll say, you know, I say that in quotations um, because there's more to just her and I writing this book. And it's simply called What Makes a Great Principal. And I think Alice and I, um, kind of when we decided to write this book, this has kind of been a couple of years in the making. And I, I really didn't, really didn't, have a vision of what this book could look like until I let it sit for a little while. And some of the advice I give to writers uh, as I work with them often is don't force a book, let it come to you, let it, let it happen. And basically I read her book called a, called leading the whole teacher. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I saw elements of what, what makes a great principal and what that could look like in how she wrote leading the whole teacher and so her and I are working on this and we have identified five domains of basically what great principles do. And we base this on, you know, um, research that we've done on this topic, obviously, but also looking at what organizations kind of um, have shared and, and kind of synthesizing those ideas. And I really wanted to write this book, not because I ever thought I was a great principal, but because I knew I had a really great principal. And if I didn't have that great principal, I wouldn't be talking to you today. I'd probably be in a different profession. And I really didn't know what a great principal was until I had one. And so we share about this, but here's what's really unique about the book. We do get insights from uh, either current or former principals talking about those domains and really what they learned. Um, uh, and, and, and how they actually shared it, how they implemented those ideas. But here's what's really unique about the book. Um, one of the questions I've been asking forever to teachers is, would you want to be a student in your own classroom? And the, the reality of this is, when you ask that question, you're really trying to understand who are the people you serve, what's their experience in the places that you actually create, and moving backward from there. And Asking that question, I think, is a really important one. But the other question, I kind of mentioned it earlier, is would I want to be a staff member on a school that I was principal? Too often when I, when I talk to people that, you know, maybe are considering going into admin, becoming administrators, 
they'll say to me, I don't want to do those things that that my principal does. I'm like, well, when you're the principal, you kind of do what you want. Um, You know, and I know that's people feel that's not totally true. The reality of really great principles is that if you are good with communication, if you're good with your community, you have a lot of flexibility, right? If you're getting phone calls to the superintendent's office all the time, things totally change. But there's a lot of opportunity to create what you wanted as a teacher when you became a principal. And here's why this book is going to be unique. We actually have uh, teachers or former teachers, even uh, a student or two, who are writing stories about great principles they've had and how they actually um, showed those domains that Allison and I have focused on and really um, what some of the strategies that their principals use that brought out the best in them. And I think that's what's unique. A lot of times when when you read a book, it's coming from, uh, from like a top-down perspective. People that, you know, were superintendents telling principals how they should be because they've worked with so many principals. But teacher, there's more teachers have worked with principals than anybody. And the reality of this is um, we wanted to get their perspective and hear their stories and share that. And so a lot of times I hear principals saying, you know, it's really important that we consider the people that we're serving. And so that's why we, we're actually having this book as a collaboration between myself, Allison, and some really great principals, but most importantly, from the teachers and the students they've served. And so hearing their perspective. And so if you are either a principal, an aspiring administrator, or you work with principals, I think it's going to really be a great book. And Allison is just an amazing writer. I feel so blessed to be working with her on this. And the contributors we have, and we'll be announcing that pretty soon, are incredible. And so that's the something professional part of this um, podcast.